Hey friends, welcome back to the Bald Booktuber. My name is Scott. I'm coming at you today with a very late March wrap-up, so let's get started on this. This month, and I am including April 1st for this month, uh, just because I wrapped up a couple things on April 1st, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm like getting this to you. I read four short stories and six books, um, three of which were rereads. So we will get into that. I'll start with the short stories. I read Fugitive from the collection Instinct. Uh, as I understand, all animal-related stories and all of the proceeds went to, uh, might have been Humane Society or or some animal-friendly um, charity. Uh, this was quite good. Uh, I would say if you're going to read this, make sure you are at least up to date through Skin Game, uh, though ideally... I would say if you're up to date through the series, through Battleground, that would be even better. This is from the vantage point of Mouse, Best Boy, uh, your favorite Temple Dog, and mine. Uh, so it's cool to have his POV. Um, we also see Mr. in this one, uh, Mr. the Cat, of course, uh, as well as some other characters that I won't spoil because they are, um, you know, it's better to be current through the series. Uh, this is really, really fun. It's short. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, take a peek at it, especially, like I said, if you're caught up through Dresden Files. The other three are all new-ish uh, Christopher Rocchio Sun Eater entries uh, in various publications. So um, two were published late last year. I hadn't got to yet. And one was actually published on April 1st, and I read it the day it was published. So we'll go through those. We have Gutter Ballet from No Game for Nights, uh, which is a uh, collection from Bain of various short stories from their writers. Uh, this I enjoyed quite a little bit. Uh, we're introduced to some new characters, and it has sort of a detective type of vibe in it. We also learn about some various extra slurring uh, factions, and we learn a little bit more about Vergosos, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, we haven't really talked too much about that since Howling Dark, so it was good to uh, kind of revisit that. Uh, I like this a lot. This was really good. Next up, we had Mother of Monsters, uh, which I would, uh, this and the next one, I would say, uh, not required reading uh, before Disquiet God comes out, but uh, I think it will definitely be worth your while to check them out. They're short, uh, and they add to existing lore, character, and setting, uh, which is really good. With this one, uh, Mother of Monsters, uh, this looks at uh, the Monumentals, which we don't know a ton about, but I am certain will be... Um, and I think Christopher is sort of implied they're going to be a big part of Disquiet Gods. So I would say check this one out. And then, like I said, on April 1st, which I probably shouldn't be counting in this wrap-up, but I am anyway, I read uh, The Royal Game, which came out April 1st. It was published in Grimdark Magazine, uh, which makes Christopher laugh because he doesn't write Grimdark and people ask him about it. And he doesn't really have strong opinions one way or the other when it comes to the grim dark subcategory of fantasy, but uh, but they asked him to write this. Uh, not, I mean, they asked him to make an entry into the magazine, and he chose this. It's very very good. Um, maybe my short favorite short story has so far. Um, maybe not, but probably uh, probably in the discussion. Um, this one definitely do not read unless you're caught up with, uh, through Ashes of Man, uh, because it will spoil things in earlier books if you do. Um, Hadrian, it's not from his viewpoint, but he is a character in the story, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely would check it out, and I think, uh, one or two of the major reveals we get in this are, again, going to be very, very important. Uh, for Disquiet Gods and going forward. All right, let's talk about the books I either read or reread this month. That's mostly what we're here for. 
Uh, so as always, I will go from least to most favorite, though I will say I loved every single book that I read this month. Um, really, that's two months in a row where it's all great books, uh, which is fantastic. Um, starting with my, you know, least favorite, but still very, very good, easy for Stanley Nods is Excalibur. This is book three of the Warlord Chronicles. I have loved each of the three books so far, and I've loved each of them a bit more than the last one. Very, very good series. Uh, would recommend uh, great historical fiction, uh, great Arthurian retelling, uh, which is not uh, a topic I'm super familiar with. I haven't uh, seen or read a ton of Arthurian legend stuff. Uh, I'm just more familiar with uh, some of the basic concepts in history, but, uh, but this was very good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It, again, leaned into some magical elements, which I really liked. Uh, we got to see uh, Dervil continue to grow as a character. I thought that was great. Uh, and I really liked Arthur in this book. He was fantastic. So, um, like I said, each book uh, better than the last, in my opinion. I know Enemy of God is most people's favorite. They read this series, but for me, Excalibur was the best of the three. Um not much more to say. Um, really, really enjoyed the series. Jonathan Keeble as the narrator was fantastic. I'm very happy that I did this, uh, and I like that I kind of spaced it out over three months. So uh, I will definitely be checking out more Bernard Cornwell as we go forward. Uh, I think he's a very good writer, writes action spectacularly, and I like how he leans into uh, some of the myths and some of the legends. Great stuff. All right, we had a huge release in the month of March. My good friend and yours, Dr. Philip Chase. Uh, I won't pretend to be objective on this. I went in expecting to love it, and I did love it. Uh, Philip is a fantastic writer, um, in addition to being just a wonderful human being. So uh, I have had the good pleasure of being on his channel. Uh, check it out if you have not already. I'll have it obviously linked in the description. I've been on panel discussions with him. Uh, we're talking Realm of the Elderlings on Mike's channel. We've uh, gone through so far Farseer and Live Ship, and I always love discussing with Philip. Um, he has a major, major grasp on the fantasy genre. Obviously, he knows what tropes to lean into. He knows what tropes to subvert. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I thought that... Uh, I've watched several reviews. I see a lot of people uh, that weren't necessarily emotionally tied to Day Raven as a character. I thought Day Raven was fine. Uh, I thought he was good. I liked his. Uh, I liked his friend uh, that helped him along the way, the bondsman Imhar. I thought Imhar was a really cool character. I really loved the priests in this tale. Uh, Bledla is a madman. Is <laughs> the supreme priest uh, sort of the uh, definitely the antagonist, but someone who uh, it's interesting to kind of see their mindset and, and where the story goes for them. Uh, Yoramond, uh, one of the other high priests, I really, really liked. Uh, a lot of really good stuff here. I love the magic in this book. It's more of an empathic type of magic. It feels like something Robin Hobb would write about. Um, so uh, to me, before I even had read the series, or I'm sorry, the first book of the series, um, I, it sounded to me a lot like the skill and the wit sort of combined, uh, as, as Hobb does throughout Realm of the Elderlings, and that's sort of how it felt to me. It's a empathic type of magic where, uh, to me, any good magic has consequences. The consequences for this one are if you're using magic against another individual, you're feeling their pain and their emotions and their strife. Uh, which I thought was very cool and very well realized and very well written. Um, so yeah, very good. The Way of Edan is the name of the book. Uh, that is the first one in the Edan series. Books uh, two and three will come out later this year in June and September, uh, respectively. And I can't wait to get to those. I think you set up some really cool stuff here. And I am anxious to get to them. Uh, also, uh, right now... Uh, Alan from the, the Library of Alexandria, again, your friend and mine, uh, is working on the audiobooks, so I can't wait to get those. If there is, I guess, one uh, one thing that, that 
was difficult for me, uh, and this could be personally just a me thing, uh, the names were hard for me to pronounce at times, and uh, the incantations of these spells, uh, with several unfamiliar words string together, uh, and, and sometimes in long patches. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I kept thinking internally in my mind as I was sort of skimming over these incantations, uh, that these characters forgot about Dre. Uh, it's, uh, it seemed like a bunch of gibberish to me, and, and no one's going to understand that joke, but that's okay. Uh, it, I, I made it because it's funny to me. So that's all right. Um, but yes, overall, very, very strong, easy for Stanley Nods, uh, a great debut novel uh, for Philip. Uh, congratulations to him. I know that uh, he's doing well sales-wise. Everyone is checking it out and, and snapping up the book, which they should. And I know many people are reading it in April, uh, especially for the the key mark read along. So I'm anxious to see many, many more people get into it. It's fantastic. Check it out. All right. And then we're going to talk about my three rereads. Uh, if you've been following along, you know I've been rereading these series and been loving my rereads. So no special surprises here. Uh, first one we'll talk about is Morningstar, uh, which is book three of Red Rising, uh, the final entry in that first Red Rising series. Uh, and I absolutely love that book. I probably loved it more on this reread than I did even the first time around. Um, if you are the type of person that tried to read Red Rising and said, eh, it's not really my thing, uh, I would implore you to at least read through Golden Sun, check it out a little bit further, and see if it works for you. Because uh, in my personal opinion, they, you know, each book gets stronger. I know many people uh, say Golden Sun is their favorite, and that's... That's fine. Um, for me, Morningstar has everything I love about the series. It has a lens on my favorite characters within the series, uh, and it explores uh, my favorite, uh, I guess, uh, faction or color, which is the Obsidians. Um, uh, yeah, I love the Obsidians. So we get a fair amount of that here. Um, and it sets up a lot of stuff going into Iron Gold uh, and Dark Age, that second uh, series that is continuing on where we're at. So uh, good stuff. Definitely check it out. It is, of course, narrated by my guy, Tim Gerard Reynolds, who is outstanding. Uh, Pierce Brown has really put something special together here. And I had a great time with Morningstar. Next up, we have Fool's Fate, book three of The Tawny Man, which usually would be uh, a higher entry on this particular list, uh, but for uh, a couple of other things that we'll talk about. Uh, Fool's Fate is my favorite in Tawny Man. It's my favorite up to that point in Realm of the Elderlings. Uh, it wraps up a lot of very cool and loose ends, and it does it wonderfully. I can't wait to talk Tawny Man with uh, Mike and the panel uh, of Madison and Jake and Philip. Um, I think that's everybody, uh, as we talk about that sometime in the coming month or two, um, yeah, Fool's Fate's fantastic, uh, I know, again, some people say that <clears throat> Tawny Man is too slow or doesn't have enough plot, I, it doesn't matter to me, I, she writes characters better than anybody, and I could spend all the time in the world with them and have the best of times, uh, that series will break your heart, it will, uh, do all kinds of stuff to you emotionally, and it certainly did that to me yet again. Uh, I love Fool's Fate. It's my second favorite in all of Realm of the Elderlings, uh, which is my second favorite overall series of all time. It's fantastic, and James Langton does uh, a fantastic narration throughout Tawny Man. He is outstanding. All right, on any normal month, uh, <laughs> this... I would just put this first and, and call it good, but uh, but rereads can't be book of the month. Uh, so this is my favorite fantasy book of all time. It's in my mind the best written fantasy book of all time and always will be. That's, of course, Storm of Swords, book three of the Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. Uh, I don't think there's much that needs to be said about this book that hasn't already been said, although uh, do tune in because as we read and reread along, 
uh, myself and Joanna and Yolene and Joanna, Susan, and Alex uh, will have a great deal to say about this. And Alex is hosting uh, on his channel, uh, Tall Guy Reads, uh, both our discussion and a follow-up discussion. Um, and that'll be coming at the end of the month of April. Do tune in. We're going to have a ton to say. Um, there so many amazing things happen in this book that uh, summarizing it really doesn't make a lot of sense other than to say if you've read it you understand what I mean if you haven't read it yet stop procrastinating read the book uh it is of course read by Roy Detrice who again not my favorite narrator in the world but uh, a narrator I've spent a lot of time listening to in my life as I go back through these on rereads um R.I.P. Roy, uh, and uh, yeah, good enough for me to enjoy it. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. And then, of course, uh, for the third month in a row, uh, and again, if you've been watching the channel, you know I'm going through Book of the New Sun. Uh, Sword of the Lictor uh, is many people's favorite, including Christopher Rocchio, who again joined me on the channel for the discussion. Totally understand why that would be so many people's favorite. I loved it. I I think I still slightly prefer Claw of the Conciliator, but it's so close that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter too much. But uh, I'm just having a phenomenal time with this series. Uh, it's crazy how many levels you can read this story on, which we've talked about. Um, I also, uh, myself and my friend Brent, who's reading it along with me as well, uh, over Brent over Mike's Discord, he um, he recommended a like a companion chapter by chapter guide and a lexicon uh, dictionary uh, books and I, I snapped those up on ebook and I've been reading those along uh, as I go through uh, each of these books within the the wider book of the New Sun and uh, they are certainly not required reading but they've deepened my understanding and appreciation for what Wolf is doing here uh, which is great. Um, Again, not not too much to say. If you are caught up through Book of the New Sun, I would say check out the videos on the channel of myself and Rocchio. Uh, it's, of course, his favorite series, uh, his favorite author. Uh, and, you know, hearing his take on some of this stuff has been uh, very eye-opening for me and deepened my appreciation for what's going on with it. The narration is done by Jonathan Davis, and he is outstanding. He is the perfect fit for this series. I can't recommend him enough. All right, let's talk stats uh, for the month of March slash April 1st. I guess cheating a little bit, but that's all right. Um, so I read six books. I read 3,830 pages, which doesn't count, uh, count the 80 or so pages of short stories. That's an average of 638 pages per book. Uh, obviously, uh, a couple chonkers in there uh, this month with Storm of Swords, which is over 1,100 pages, and Fool's Fate, which... Uh, I think is over 900. Average rating 4.7. Again, um, you know, nothing but fire this month. It was all grade books. And average pages read per day was 127, which is, you know, my most of the three months so far, uh, which is a positive trend that I like to see. I'm hope hopefully keep that up in April and maybe bump that just a little bit more so I can get some more read. So really that wraps up the first quarter, which is unbelievable. Um, and I had a fantastic reading quarter. Uh, lots of rereads. Um, I'm hopeful throughout the rest of the year the rereads slow down just a tiny bit. Uh, I do love to reread. I've talked about it on the channel ad nauseum, uh, including a top 10 list for why, but uh, I do want to get to more stuff. So uh, I am trying to prioritize getting to new things in the remaining months after I've uh, wrapped up a couple of these rereads. But... Uh, Hope you've enjoyed this wrap up. Uh, I got a little rambly at times, but uh, thank you for joining me on the journey. If you like what you see here, I would appreciate you subscribing. Uh, we passed 850 subscribers on the channel in the month of March, uh, which is kind of a cool milestone. We're getting closer to that thousand subscribers. Uh, I appreciate every one of you, uh, especially those that always watch the videos and always leave a comment. Uh, means a lot to me. So. As always, my friends, publication order always.